The four port manifold used to be my favorite method for charging a system, but that was before the probes came out. And I'm absolutely falling in love with these probes. So let's go through the steps you would use to charge a system with the probes. So I want to find my high pressure gauge, the one that's red for high pressure. We're going to go ahead and attach this to the system. I still use the two finger methods, making sure that if it hung up and refrigerant came out this way or this way, my fingers were correct. Again, never use a kind of absorbent gloves like cotton. And if you're going to use gloves, you use some like a butyline gloves or a chemical resistant gloves so it won't absorb that liquid refrigerant. But it just threaded right on, no problem. On my suction side, I'm going to do something a little bit different. What I'm going to use is a service T right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my suction probe on this T connection. Then I'm gonna take the T connection and I'm gonna put it right here on my low side service port. Now my T is connected to the service port and my probe is connected to the T. And I got this third little option here. So now we're ready to add refrigerant. But just like before, I zero my scale out, I put my tank on it and I get my starting weight. I write that down, I'm gonna compare that to the last call to make sure I didn't lose any refrigerant. But then I'm gonna take and install my hose. I'm gonna put my hose on my tank and while it's in the vapor form, notice I have my manual low loss fitting. So we're going to put this fitting in the open position, right here in the open position. And I'm going to crack my tank and this is going to allow the vapor refrigerant to push through the hose and come out the very end. Once it's purged, I simply close this valve back off. Then I can take my tank and turn it upside down where the liquid's going to come out of the bottom. I'm going to take this hose and attach it to my T. Now I double check to make sure my valve is fully open on my tank and I leave the valve closed on the T. I'm going to take my scale and zero it out. That way everything that's on the scale is reading zero pounds. And as I take refrigerant out of the tank, it's going to start showing how much. Then I'm going to get my phone app out. I prefer the Measure Quick app because it's absolutely awesome. And then what I'm going to do is start adding refrigerant. Now, just like before, we want to add refrigerant. We've already purged out the hose. And I'm going to add refrigerant with little bitty shots of liquid refrigerant. So just open and close that tank like that. Now it allows a short little burst of liquid refrigerant to go through this valve. And as it goes past this Schrader port, it goes into this valve here, it expands into a vapor, it goes into the compressor. But because it's a short connection, there's no hose to go through, I need to give it smaller shots of liquid refrigerant. I'm able to do this more frequently, but I gotta give it smaller shots of refrigerant. It doesn't have time to expand to those other hoses like you would with the manifold gauge set. So it's easy to get too much liquid on this style connection. Again, you can feel the back side of this connection here. When you open and close it, you can feel the back side of this and you can wait for that temperature to raise up. So it's the same temperature as this side. Once you get the same temperature, Give it a little shot of refrigerant. And you keep doing that to your superheat and your subcooling matches, or if you're using the Measure Quick app, all your numbers start coming into play. So it's very easy to add refrigerant in this method. Just simply open and close that connection. Now when I'm done or I'm almost done charging it, I do something a little bit different. What I do at this time is I close off my tank entirely. So my tank is completely closed off. I still have liquid refrigerant in this hose. So what I'm gonna do is keep giving it these little shots of refrigerant. And I'm gonna keep doing that until all of the liquid refrigerant has gone out of this hose. And eventually I'll be able to leave this valve completely open. I look at my app and I see that my app says that the pressure is not changing at all. That way I know all the liquids out of this hose. There's only gonna be vapor left, vapor only left. So I'm done charging the system. I'm gonna close this valve off and I'm going to unscrew it from my T. Now I'm entirely done with my tank and my hose. Then I can finish charging. I can take my service ports off. De minimis, the smallest amount you could imagine comes out. I'm going to put my valve caps back on my unit. I like to make sure I keep these clean, put them back in the bag as soon as possible so oil and contaminants don't get in there. So now we're done with our tank and we have two options now. So we're gonna turn our tank right side up and one of my options is I could take the hose off of my tank entirely because I'm done with it. Now me personally, I have found this summer that I like to leave my hose attached to my tank. So I got four different refrigerants I'm using. I got four of these hoses attached to each tank. And what I like to do, me personally, is double check to make sure my tank is shut off. Then I take with this facing away from me, just open and close very quick to let the main amount of pressure off of this. So it goes down to zero, or pretty close to zero, but there's still refrigerant inside of this hose. It's still protected, it's still in good shape. Then what I can do is just wrap my hose around my tank and I have a little plug that I put in the end right here to make sure it stays clean and protected. 
This way I don't have to re-purge that hose every time I use it, and it keeps my hose clean, it keeps it ready to use at all times. Now that's just me personally. You follow what your lead's gonna do, and it's also an extra expense having a hose for each tank, but it's just one of the things that I found to do. In one of the past videos where we saw me doing some B-roll of me adding refrigerant, there were several people that caught me saying you didn't vent or purge that center hose before you used it. And this is the reason why, because I leave it purged and leave it hooked up. Now, as a side note, you can actually leave the hoses on even if you're using a manifold gauge set. What's cool about doing it this way is I can take this hose and attach it to the middle of my manifold gauge set. And now it pretty much makes this three port manifold gauge set just like a four port manifold gauge set. And I can then control the refrigerant flowing right here at this point. So it's a nice little added benefit. Now it's not an industry standard thing. It's just something that I've been doing and it really saves me a lot of time. Me personally, I don't want to use my probes on an old system or a system that has any kind of a dye in it or some any other possible contaminants in there. I want to make sure I use my old manifold gauge set. But with any of the new equipment, high-end equipment, I know it's going to be working good. I want to use my probes because they're so much faster. They take up so much less room. Both my manifolds, I can put them right in my bag, carry it around, and we're ready to go. Now there's still another option. Instead of using this T, I can actually use my Schrader Core removal tool. And with this, I can actually attach this to my suction side. Then I can take and push my tool inside of the unit and I can grab that Schrader port and start to unscrew it. Now that that's unscrewed, I can close this valve off entirely. I can unscrew this fitting right here. And I've taken my Schrader Core completely and completely out. I can put my probe right here in the very end. Then when I open up this valve, I'm getting a really accurate reading because I don't have any loss from my Schrader ports. So the pressure is going straight through this, no Schrader core at all, and I'm reading the pressure directly on my probe. It's the more accurate way, but it takes a little bit longer. Then I can take my tank, hook it up, and either purge my hose, or if I'm using the same hose, it's still pre-purged, but I open the tank up, turn it upside down so I'm getting liquid refrigerant and it doesn't fractionate, and I can attach my hose to this little side port right here, which has a Schrader port built into it. Then I could add refrigerant by opening and closing this little valve right here, just like we did before. That's a second way of doing it. It's a little bit more accurate because you don't have that Schrader core in the way. But wait, there's a third option. I can also take the suction probe and attach it to the side port of my valve core removal tool. And in this scenario, let's say that we do not have this ball valve. So we'll take it off and get it out of the way. And for this example, we only have this automatic low loss fitting. So what I'm gonna do is leave my hose loose on the refrigerant tank. I'm gonna put the automatic low loss valve on the very end of my valve core removal tool. Then what I do is I'm going to crack open this valve. It's gonna allow refrigerant to flow into this hose and it's going to purge out right here. I close this valve back off and now I've purged all the refrigerant out of this hose. Then I can take my tank, I can open my tank all the way up, turn my tank upside down, zero my scale out, and now I'm ready to start charging. And I can use this valve to open and close to allow refrigerant to flow out of my tank into the system. And you're still going to throttle it in, but it's just another way of doing the exact same thing. Take it out of the tank without fractionation, through the hose without contamination, and into the compressor without hurting or damaging it. Then I'm done with that. I simply close off my tank entirely. I throttle in that last little bit of refrigerant that's inside of this hose until that's empty. Then what I can do is simply unscrew my low loss fitting hose, two fingers so I don't get burned. I close off the valve to my tank entirely, and then I loosen this hose. The minimus purge the vapor out of this hose, and I can do two things. I can either leave this hose attached to my tank so it keeps it clean, or I can remove my hose entirely and put it back on my manifold gauge set or wherever else to keep both of these clean from oil. Then we have to get our tool back off. So we're gonna use is our Schrader valve core removal tool, and this is where I want to inspect the Schrader core. And this one looks pretty bad, so I'd recommend putting a new one in. We're gonna keep these in bags. They're very cheap and easy to put in. We're just gonna put it right inside this connection. Put it right inside that connection. Now I'm gonna open this valve up, so now my tool can go inside. I'll slide this all the way in, hold it with my thumb, and then I just thread my Schrader port right back into place. 
once I've threaded it back into place, just to make sure that it's in there, I'm gonna just slowly loosen this. Just a little bit of refrigerant came out, nothing else came out. I can now close this valve off, take my tool completely off. Take my low pressure probe off, put my side port back on, put the correct valve cap back on the system, and now I'm done. There's many different types and brands of these manifold gauge sets. You gotta find out what works best for you and what fits into your budget. And what may work best for you today may be different in the future. Maybe you're working on different equipment or you have different skill sets, you have different needs you're working with. The catch is you wanna take care of your equipment, take care of your tools. People talk about digital gauges and they might break. Well, I've seen plenty of technicians have their analog gauges hanging up in the truck and it bouncing around in the truck damage these manifold gauge sets. Even the analogs would get damaged. They're actually more sensitive than some of these digital ones. So whatever tool you have, you wanna make sure you take care of it. I like to leave these wrapped up in my tool bag down low and where nothing will fall on them. Also, they're not bouncing around, no vibration, and I like to release the pressure on them when I get done. Some technicians will leave the liquid refrigerant in the high pressure hose. They put it inside that hot truck and in the summertime that pressure increases, the temperature increases, and it will bust the manifold gauge set. So that's some of the issues we gotta take care of. But really, taking care of your equipment will go a long ways. Not throwing them around, taking care of them, cleaning them up every once in a while. Another thing is the hoses. Keep the hoses out of direct sunlight when you're not using them. Keeping the hoses clean, also keeping them purged, keeping the moisture and keeping the contaminants out of the ends, especially the automatic low loss fittings. They're notorious for failing because people will drop them in the dirt or they leave them open and dirt gets in there and it clogs up that little moving valve. But I like to keep my manifold gauge set clear. They make little plugs you can put on the end of them, especially now that we have these probes, those little plugs are really handy. On the typical manifold gauge sets, you can put the hose back on the other end of the manifold. It's made to hold that hose and keep them clean. Whichever method you do, keep your hoses clean and also inspect those hoses. You'll see that from time to time they'll start to leak or get cracked or start being dry. So replacing those hoses, typically every year I replace my set of hoses and I use my older ones that are still good for other jobs. So there's tons of still use that we have available for those. And also we can use them for nitrogen and flushing out drain lines and all kinds of other situations. Even if they're leaking, they still have some use. So keeping up with your equipment, take care of them, and the brands aren't as big as a lot of people think. You'll buy all one brand because your lead likes it, and then you work with a different lead, he's like, oh, all oh, that's junk, you need to get rid of that. And find out what works best for you. And if your lead says that your tools are junk, you can always say, great, I'm so glad you're gonna buy me the good stuff. But don't let that get to you. You're gonna find out what works best for you and you're gonna be ultimately always changing and growing through your career. But don't be afraid of that new technology. And remember, no matter what you have, it's always going to be changing.